So folks, um, here you are now. I want to help you with a couple of things. So I'm going to turn the group attention to something now. Okay, so the other elements we have to add are what's happening on zero. We've got this cylinder here. I'm going to make a door in these chairs, and I want to introduce the idea as a grid using those chairs. Because they're really conveniently cube shaped. <laughs> so let's look at one simple thing the door. So can I get everybody's attention on that? Has anybody drawn the door already on this angle or not? We're just sort of roughly. You know what? What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the angle of a bit just so it's a little bit easier to see um, what happens when something's turned on an angle. So just going to open it a bit further. Okay, so it's on a more significant angle. So this is a simple concept. All right, so can I have you guys look at my drawing here for a minute? Just take your eyes up so you know I can They look really, they look, they've got dimension. They've got structure. It's good. And I've noticed you all have a really good ability to judge space, too, and, and sight measuring. It's really great. you got a great eye. It's frustrating, though, isn't it, sometimes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And one of the problems that happens that if you're sight measuring, and you're not doing it consistent, consistently carefully, it gets frustrating. So one of the things that if you're doing it, you're like, oh, that's not right. Oh, my gosh. This is like torture. <laughs> um, it helps if you always keep your arms straight so that when you're sight measuring, what you're finding is consistent. If you're bending your arm and things aren't going to be consistent and you're going to get frustrated because something's not going to be quite right. Um, so it helps if you are going to do it to try to do it as consistently as possible. Now, some people don't like sight measuring a lot as far as proportions go. So it's just like too anal for them. I get that. So what you can do instead is say what vertically lines up with what? What horizontally lines up with what? That can help. Or can you just judge this shape looks like this size compared to that shape? So you're kind of using like the idea of negative space. That's for some people who don't really like the sight measuring thing. They'll just kind of go on their eye more and get something that I can see easily that proportion and then compare other things to it. Okay, so that can help. All right, so what are we going to do next? Let's look at this door. The door is on an angle, right? Um, you have to put it on a bit more of an angle. So. Uh, so there's a couple ways you can find that. One of the things we're going to look for, so we're going to do a little bit of searching here. How much overlap can I see, and where do I see the door edge, right? So that we have, so where I'm standing, I can see it poking up above the door frame, giving me a shape kind of like that. And I can see what kind of rectangle do I see beside the door in the door frame. So what opening do I have there? So I'm seeing this long, slim sliver there. How much overlap do I see above the door frame and below the door frame? It's even with, so it's lower than these containers. It's about there for me. All right. Now we could do, um, do any of you guys still read analog clocks like with the hands? <laughs> So you can do a clock angle kind of sight measurement if you want. You can say, if I turn my pencil to follow the angle there of the uh, top of the door, that's not 9 o'clock. I know it's not horizontal. It's tilted. Kind of between, if I look at the clock, it's kind of between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock, the angle that I'm seeing to the top of the door frame. You see that? So we can... Make judgment of what that angle is that I see. Um, do you guys want me to move this chair so you can see this? Just for now, we can put it back after. You've already drawn the picture, right? So I just gotta put this down a minute. Just move the chair so you can see. Put it here for now. 
Okay, and then if we look for the bottom angle of the door, can you see it now better? You might even see like a, a negative space shape between this chair and the bottom of the door, and if you could judge a triangle. So people who like to just go by their eye like to look for triangles. So what o'clock would that be? Well, that's like, for me, I'm seeing kind of between uh, seven and eight. So what clock angle did I see? And it's obviously has to join up to the corner. So I could look at it just as an offset of how much and then join it to the corner or judge the angle, right? Um, so I want you to visually do that. And then we're going to check what you did, finding a vanishing point for that door. So first do it visually. So and one way some people like to look by holding their pencil horizontally and looking for this shape here, the triangle they see. Some people like to do the clock angle, you know, or just look for your overlap and then join it to the corner. Whatever way works for you, I want you to find an angle there visually. There's also another sight measuring way I can show you too. Let's get you all to put that on. Yeah. Oh, is it straight? Okay, but it's still, you can still see it, it's on the angle. So, what clock is it? Put your pencil in front of you. Match the angle. Right here. How much does it drop down? So, one of the things you're going to find is it halfway through the door? Is it third of the way through the door time? Is it? So you look at your door, do you find what proportion of opening do you have? Like does the door leading edge come halfway through the door, a third of the way, a quarter of the way? Why is that leading edge? Look how much it pokes above the door frame and below the door frame. So I might look just for negative space. I might take my uh, ruler across the bottom of the door and see what does it line up with over here. And I can sight measure the clock angle. Put my pencil out in front of me. And then match it with the angle of the door. All right? Put that on your page. And it obviously has to join up over here. Now, does everybody have their door in? I want to show you what happens for perspective now. Everybody got it? Anybody not? Do you have your door in?
<sighs> you're getting tired. It looks like you had a hard night. <laughs> you need to go get a coffee? Should we take a break? All right, guys. Can I turn your attention here? We're going to look at how this thing works in perspective now, right? Okay, so we've visually figured it out with sight measuring. And it looks pretty good, right? Um, now, what happens with perspective? Let's look at that. So this is great when you have something turn on an angle. So if we take these, and if we've drawn accurately, they should meet at a point, and the same point, on the horizon line. Oops. I didn't do it accurately. <laughs> So, what did I do wrong? Maybe it's, I don't know. I did one of them wrong because what we want, this should meet their horizon line on the same point. So, I got a. Because the final bit goes off the page. Oh, yeah, it could be off the page. It's not necessarily on the page. So I think I had too much angle on the top. So if you trace that out, it should hit the horizon line, and then that's the vanishing point of something on that angle. So you may have to adjust one of your edges of your door. It needs to go to the horizon line. So, if I took this chair and uh, put it at the same angle as the door, I can now draw this chair at that angle using that vanishing point. Uh, you see, this edge is at the same vanishing point as the door. So, I like interior designers sometimes want to turn their uh, chairs in the room. So, this edge, this bottom edge, right? You're going to go to the same vanishing point as this door. So, this is in two point perspective. Where would the other edge be? So, for the bottom, sorry, the bottom and the top of the door frame has a different vanishing point on the other side. Can you find the thickness of your door frame? That should go to another point on the horizon line. Just like if we were going to draw this chair on an angle. So that's two point in a one point perspective. Can you see that? That's kind of neat. So can we put a thickness on our door frame? So, and where would that go? Just so you have the understanding, that needs to go to the horizon line too, doesn't it? What should that look like? And they need to meet up at the same point. There you see. So we want to have a thickness to that door. Oh, nice, Christine. Yeah, see, it gets bigger, it's got dimension. And what about the door pull? Right? This door pull goes to the same energy point, right? Oh. Yeah, but you did, Christine. It's good. It gives it depth, doesn't it? Yeah. So. Good. Don't you love when it starts to make sense? 
<laughs> nice. Okay, so everybody's got the door. Let's add some other stuff in. I'm gonna move this chair. I don't really want to go this chair. But do you see? Can you imagine right now if we did how you could draw this and this edge to the same vanishing points that we just made for the door? Look at that down and see if you can imagine that. Cool, huh? So it's not so it's not so mysterious. <laughs> Okay. Now, how about the cylinder here? Want to? Uh, I'm gonna grab another piece of paper just to show you something, and I want to bring your attention to that. Good. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Good. Takes attention to detail, doesn't it? Oh. Some people love this stuff, and other people, it's like, oh my gosh, no. <laughs> now, fortunately for all of you, there's uh, lots of different opportunities within your careers, and if perspective isn't one of them, that's okay, <laughs> because there's lots of things you can do. Uh, but it sure helps have an understanding and at least you have to have enough uh, shown understanding to be able to get accepted into your program it may not make or break your career but I found for me as a designer that it's helped me a lot to be able to do it um, and like Garth was saying so Garth's my animation instructor and he was saying like maybe you're gonna be a character designer but you still have to understand enough perspective that when that leaning foot or the shoulders coming forward or they're reaching out, that you've got perspective on that character, right? That that they look like they're occupying space. Or he said, even if you're doing um, like layout or storyboarding, they'll often draw this little kind of grid on the ground and the ceiling to get a sense of the space and the lay of the land that the characters are in. So even a rudimentary understanding is important, even if you're not going to be one of the concept artists doing you know the elaborate scenes right so um okay so let's look at uh, how to draw a cylinder um so let's uh everybody just look this way so we have that uh garbage can is a cylinder and if i draw a cylinder a little bit bigger so let's try it so i'm going to draw a perspective box or a cylinder, a little bigger. Um, so I know about a cylinder is that it's a circle, right? I'm gonna drink this water so I can use this thing. <laughs> it's crooked, darn it. Okay, so we have, it's a circle and um, when we see it on an angle, it becomes an ellipse. Um, and it depends how high or low it is compared to our eye level, how round that looks. The sides are generally, like on that garbage can, are vertical. The bottom we know is flat, so the garbage can or the glass don't tilt, o tilt over, but um, people tend to draw it flatter. So when people draw cylinders without knowledge, so this is basically what it should look like, people tend to they get too round on the top because they know it's supposed to be round. And they tend to make it too flat on the bottom because they know it's supposed to be able to sit flat, right? Um, and then they often have trouble putting it in the right place in the room because it's supposed to be flat on the horizontal surface. So sometimes that's hard to, to get it sitting in the right place. So we want to look at it and say, oh, the bottom edge of that garbage can drops down below the wall. It's not level with the wall. It looks visually lower. So that's sometimes difficult for people because we know, well, the floor is horizontal and the bottom of that container is horizontal. And that can trip us up. So one of the things we can look for is things like, well, how much down from the wall does the bottom of that garbage can look like it drops to get, be able to make it look like it occupies some space, right? 
So if I'm drawing a perspective with a cylinder sitting in it, so a circle fits inside a square, right? If I draw a circle, I know a circle will fit inside a square, right? I could draw one. There we go. Um, but does a perspective of a square look like a square on the floor? Doesn't really. Like, look at how the mat that looks like it's a long rectangle but doesn't look like that in our drawing, does it? So squares and perspective get really squished for shortened a lot, right? So uh, we're going to have something that looks maybe some kind of shape, something like that might be a square on the floor. And my ellipse has to fit inside that. So if we wanted to draw an ellipse construction, I would find a square on the floor into a perspective, if it's for shortening. I would draw a diagonal X to find its center. I can draw a perspective line there. Now, an ellipse is always a perfect shape. So it's always equal. So I'm going to find another color now to show you that. So an ellipse has a vertical center called the minor axis and a horizontal center called the major axis. Okay. Minor. So, and if you get into illustration, there might be a whole course just on stuff like this, just on drawing objects. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> but it's good because then you can draw anything. So, you know, learning about some of these basic things enables you to draw anything because all things are made out of basic geometry, right? Like, you can see these lights on the ceiling. They're all either some aspect of a circle or a cylinder or a, or a square or something, right? So um, that's one reason in illustration that there's a lot of focus on how to draw the basic shapes. Also, for anatomy, uh, for your characters, basic geometric shapes, right? And you might be able to think, what are some characters you can think of that are very geometric? What are some famous characters that you like? What about you? Do you have any favorite, favorite characters that are very geometrically shaped? Um, not, not off the top of my head. I guess there's the, the one robot from the movie Robot. Yeah, robots. They're very geometric shaped, that one. Yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars. Oh, yeah. We got uh, R2-D2. Right? Huh? Not the new one yet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, you mean the new droid, right? Oh. oh. The new droid, yes. But also the new one. Anyone say that yet, though? I haven't seen it yet, so don't tell us anything. <laughs> but you know, I don't know, SpongeBob? I'm not that. Pardon? He's a cruise. Eat the cruise? I haven't seen that. Have you seen what that is? You mean the duck? Yeah, the duck. It's got like that fairy. Like, yeah. Yeah. So that's like the geometry of character design. Well, some characters really have a strong geometry to them. And so this kind of training helps us to draw those things. Or even a car, to put your character in a car. Put a car in front of your building, right? Draw your couch. <laughs> so geometrics. So with cylinders, and that's one thing, like a lot of interior designers, oh, everything looks beautiful, but their lights look bad. <laughs> the round things. So knowing how an ellipse works can help. So we got Maybe I'll draw a little bigger too. There's an arc here and an arc there. That center around this sort of little X here, the minor and major axis. So if I have a circle that I'm viewing on an angle in perspective, it's going to make an ellipse shape. And the horizontal, so if we look at this container over there, I'm going to follow my view. So we look at this guy, the widest shape, right, horizontally, widest point to widest point. That's a horizontal line, okay? It always will be. Anytime you have a circle on the horizontal plane, it always has a horizontal 
major axis. It will tilt, doesn't go to the vanishing point. And then the shortest distance from the front edge to the back edge, which you can view as a vertical, is always vertical. So a major, the, an ellipse is always a perfect shape. Its centers don't follow the perspective, okay? I mean, you can put it inside a perspective box like I blew, drew in the blue, but the minor axis is always vertical and the major axis is always horizontal. We have an arc here and an arc there that are the same, okay? So I'm gonna draw that in red, you can see that. And then off on the side here, we want a shape that's nice and round, right? Um, round things, so don't do this with your cylinders. Round things can't have corners, okay? So they've always a bit rounded. There's actually a little piece of a circle just here, in here. There's another little arc, and you could actually draw a whole circle in there. And then there's just a little bit that joins it up. You could actually draft these with a compass or a, a circle template. And they always have that perfect shape. Now, depending on your eye level, right? It either looks more squished if I put it near your eye level, it's like flat, right? But the lower I put it, the more round it looks. So the lower the uh, top of the this can is compared to you, the more the major axis, minor axis gets taller. If you're looking down at it, if it's getting close to eye level, that major axis gets, or minor axis keeps getting smaller. So, and then we got straight sides going down. Now, the thing that it's good to pretend that everything's made out of clear glass so that we don't end up with this. If I have, I'm really close to the object and I'm high above it, it looks that round. And down below here, it needs to be equally round or even more round. I'm going to draw straight here. Oops. So it's got to look just as round. And each quadrant of your ellipse should look equal. Does it? Not too bad. So it's good to draw right through as if you can see through everything. And then each quadrant there, you want it to look the same. So if it doesn't, there's that. So and we are going to have um, an object drawing course for any of you that need, because in animation, you have a required drawing you have to do with the before and after of the geometric shapes. In illustration, they don't need the before and after necessarily, but they still want and still life object drawing has all the basic object shapes. Um, and storytelling. That's just tell okay, kids the still life. That's boring. Tell us something that's really cool and interesting, right? Um, and then you're supposed to, for Humber, you have to do a sort of still life of accessories, right? And show that you understand how those things are there. So this is part of that. There's, you know, other aspects. And then if you're doing like animation and you want to have a car and you want those wheels and the axle to look right, how do you, how do, you do that when you take a cylinder and turn it on its side, right? And obviously all these kinds of things are building blocks of architecture, right? So uh, let's get our garbage can drawn in there where the bottom looks slightly rounder because it's tall. So what is interesting, we draw the opposite of what it really looks like because of what we know. People will draw it flatter on the bottom, but it's actually rounder on the bottom because it's lower from our viewpoint. And they'll make the top rounder because they think it's supposed to be a circle, but it actually looks more foreshortened. So what it looks like is the opposite of what we tend to draw. So you want to watch, what does that look like? I know it's kind of far away from you, but what you can do to get a sense of how round it is, how wide, so site measure how wide compared to how tall. So if you take from front edge to back edge as a vertical site measurement, it's pretty squished, especially for you sitting down. It's going to be really skinny. So can we get an ellipse that looks like this? And then rounder at the bottom. So that, that's, that garbage can 
feels with structure, doesn't feel like it's bending and made out of revolution thing. Now for the, um, in the illustration and um, animation, they like to see your structure drawing. So you'll leave the blue line there and as if you can see through it. And then you'll have your really nice line on top that has that sense of atmospheric perspective and all of that. Um, so you do want to sort of draw through things and get an understanding of that. That looks a little wrong to me. It gets flatter. That looks better. That looks reasonable. Okay. Oh, good. And you got that quite nicely. All right. You can actually make a perspective box that you put the thing in. You could actually find here's a square, and there it is on the floor, and there it is higher up. And, and if you do more perspective drawing in college, they, they may teach you how to do that. I think that's more than we need right now. Good. Good. Yeah. Great. So, what about the garbage can lid? And the black. We get the details in too. So be careful here that this is also a mix. So is this. So what people typically do is they'll they'll flatten this out, drop this corner down, make sure it's the exact same shape going around. So when you draw out a lid. Draw it like you can see through it. Make sure that that is the exact same lips that just drops down a little lower. So, because suddenly what people do, they say, oh, that's a horizontal line. And they draw this horizontal thing instead of another nice lips. So the left brain knowledge is a powerful thing. And that it's not tilted. So major axis is always horizontal. Make sure it's not wonky tilted. That was for you. <laughs> <laughs> I noticed. You noticed too. Good. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, we have one other thing to learn now. So how about we take a quick break? Our next thing to learn is how does the grid thing work? Maybe I've seen this grid perspective thing. And we're going to learn how to make a grid on the ground here, pretending there's tiles that are going to be the same size as these chairs. And we're going to put the chairs into that grid, understand how to use grid perspective um, sort of visually. Okay, and then we have other videos. Some of you have rented them already. I'm going to remind you, if you have them, which one I'd want you to look at. Um, and want to remind you about how grid perspective works. So that's, that's a video clip for that. Let's take a quick break. Washington should have a call in there. Hello, Karen, just keep speaking. Joanne Blanchet? Oh, hi. 
Yes, they did. Um, I, okay. Okay. Um, yeah, do you know when? I have to leave uh, probably by 10 in the morning. So if it's before that, I could meet you or you could get uh, maybe rants. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Bye.